welcome, and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 Radio Program. I'm Daniel Davis. For people out there who might find themselves in the constraints of addiction, we certainly have something we want to share with you today. Perhaps you're someone who got hooked on opioids, pharmaceuticals, whether it's alcohol, tobacco, caffeine, sugar, and more. We have practices that can be used in conjunction with conventional therapies such as psychotherapy, medications, and support groups. Joining us on the program today is an herbalist and nutritional consultant of natural health with almost 50 years of experience. She teaches herbal medicine at Naropa University and the School of Health Mastery in Iceland. She's also taught at the Omega Institute, Esalon, Kripalau, and Savananda Yoga Ashram, Arise and Vision and Unified Festivals, as well as the Mayo Clinic. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 Radio program today our guest and author of the book, Addiction Free Naturally. Brigitte Mars joins us here on the program today. Thank you for being on the program. Good morning. It is my pleasure and honor. Fifty years you've been doing this, so what got you interested in, and drove your passion to be in for so long? Well, I had a wonderful French-Canadian grandmother who I would go visit her, and it was like going back in a time warp. You know, she still had a wood stove and a root cellar, and she made soap in a big cauldron in the yard, and her idea of ice cream was to put maple syrup on snow so I felt like it was sort of like a, a fairy tale or something, but she was very wise about folk remedies. And my parents would say, why do you listen to that? Those are old wives' tales. But I found that they really worked. Things like apple cider vinegar and honey or garlic or um, you know, a, an herb like plantain that you could apply in a wound. And so I became really fascinated with some of these folk remedies and by the time I was a teenager, I was trying them out on my friends and found that it worked for things like headaches and cramps and, um, you know, helping me to study and do well in school. So uh, by the time I was 17, I was, you know, making a living uh, working, managing a natural food store in the Virgin Islands. And I just kept talking to people. They were trying out these things and it really worked. So I also felt that natural remedies help to support keeping the planet green too you know because when you use something natural somewhere there's going to be you know apple orchards or fields of lavender or echinacea rather than some you know big chemical company spewing toxins in the air only to have their latest drug recalled which we've all seen happen over and over again now tell us first of all uh, what made you become uh, interested in people who have addictions well, you know, many people shop at natural food stores and they buy remedies for their you know, blood pressure or their immunity. But if they are dealing with an addiction, and it could even be something totally legal like caffeine or sugar or, or alcohol, but the addiction might get in the way of their fully healing. And so I felt that before you tell people, oh, you know, take this herb to lower your blood pressure, or this herb to make your heart stronger, or this herb for depression, we really need to look at what are some of the things that are getting in our way of ultimate health. And very often uh, it's an addiction. And addictions not only are necessarily something that we imbibe, it could be a behavior like spending too much time on the internet or gambling or um, you know, casual sexual encounters or pornography. or So there's many things that people get obsessed with that really deplete us. So I thought, you know, I'm going to write a book on it because <laughs> um, I used to be a tobacco mm. smoker, you know, and cigarettes were considered sophisticated. We were allowed to smoke in class when I was growing up. Um, I went to an all-girls school, and so, you know, by the time I was 17, I was strung out on tobacco and um, found that natural remedies like yoga breathing and chewing on things like licorice root and um, smelling essential oils helped to liberate me. And it, so I think many people try to get off an addiction just with willpower without realizing that there's so many natural things that they could use from the realm of food and herbs and supplements um, and lifestyle practices that can help them get free of addiction and reclaim ultimate health. 
Now, uh, what are your thoughts, first of all, because we've covered addiction many times on this program over the years. Uh, for instance, why addiction actually occurs and what is the thinking or if it is the reason people naturally feel the reason to hold on to it? Well, um, there's a few reasons, and we certainly know that there may be a genetic component, but I also encourage people not to use that as an excuse. You know, like I come from a long line of, you know, beer drinkers, therefore that is going to be the fate of my life. Um, so there is a genetic component. I think also people are looking for a way to medicate themselves when they have a lot of stress. I also believe that what we're really looking for is a connection to uh, divine, you know, spirit. Um, so people look for something that kind of alters your consciousness a little bit. But when we look at it physiologically, I find that many addictive substances temporarily elevate blood sugar. So let's say you have a smoke or you drink a cup of coffee or you have a, you know, two glasses of wine. Um, what that's doing is it's elevating our blood sugar and we get habituated into having this roller coaster of elevating our blood sugar and then when the effects wear off, it's time to have another whatever it is. It could even be a candy bar. Um, but I also find that those who seem to have more addictive tendencies, um, they might be poor oxygen metabolizers. So breathing deeply uh, is certainly a wonderful way to nourish and energize our brain and help us feel embodied. Um, so those are just some of the reasons, not to mention that we are, you know, marketed when we look at, you know, films and um, literature. I mean, it's not as prevalent now, but, you know, you, you see that addictive substances are often used for celebratory purposes and I think that's totally different um, but then people are trying to you know find a way to celebrate the end of the day or the beginning of the day every day and that is far different um, and then sometimes people are actually craving substances that they're allergic to so someone might be attracted to a certain kind of beverage because it contains yeast or sugar or wheat or barley or something that they're sensitive to and people feel somewhat comforted by activating their immunity. Um, so it's, it's kind of a tricky, slippery slope. Um, and of course, you know, many people start out even with a prescription or they're using it to medicate themselves, but, you know, long after the pain is gone, the addiction might still be there. Yeah. Hmm. You know, it's pretty wild, too, when you think about uh, sometimes when people break their addiction. And I've heard, uh, it isn't often, but sometimes I think, wow, that was easier than I thought it is. And mm -hmm. when you talk about, for instance, uh, things such as using herb, herbal remedies, things like that, natural diet changes, uh, let's go ahead and give uh, uh, some suggestions for our listeners about dietary suggestions that you share in your book that can help a person perhaps get over an addiction. Surely. And, you know, there is certainly a tendency for people to go from one addictive substance to another. So let's say someone gives up alcohol and then they start eating a lot of sugar, which basically becomes alcohol in the body. Or maybe they stop smoking cigarettes and then they you know, start eating, you know, more candy or more sweets. So we do know that when we are in a more alkaline state, which comes from eating fresh fruits and vegetables, um, it is easier to let go of an addiction. So that's a simple thing we can do. So we don't want to go from, you know, giving up an addiction to eating not only sugar, but refined carbohydrates, because things like you know, white bread and white pasta and, you know, white cornmeal and all of the sugary cereals that were constantly being marketed, those are also going to act very much like an addiction as far as elevating our blood sugar level. Um, I think it's really important to get good quality fats um, because that has a nourishing effect on our immune system. So that could be in the form of things like nuts and seeds or uh, extra virgin olive oil or avocados, um, getting adequate protein. Um, also, I do have a private practice and I find that foods that are black in color 
I know that sounds curious to people, but usually foods like wild rice or black rice or black beans or black chia seeds, the black coloring that naturally occurs in those plants are really high in minerals. And those minerals really help to satisfy us. And according to the principles of Asian medicine, uh, black foods with their high mineral content help to strengthen our willpower. And then we could also look at foods that support the liver uh, that help us to detoxify are going to be things like green leafy vegetables, you know, kale and collard greens and spinach and dandelion greens. Um, so those are a few things, but I'd say that we really want to avoid the trap of using um, refined sugars and refined carbohydrates. So rather than, you know, eating so much bread and pasta, we might find that using Things like millet or quinoa, um, quinoa is very high in protein, uh, millet is alkalinizing. So those might be a few places to start. And, you know, of course, it starts with like when we go shopping, what we choose to put in our carts or not. And so, again, the big focus on colorful, fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, do your best to have a salad every day. And ideally, because fats are so important, making your own salad dressing with extra virgin olive oil. A lot of the, you know, um, cooking oils that people use, canola and soy and safflower oil, they're heated to a really high temperature, which can actually be really hard on the liver. So we want to support liver health. And one last dietary thing we could do, this is an old folk remedy, is start your day with the lemon and water, um, which the sour flavor helps to activate the liver. And so many of us, we start our day with, you know, coffee or maybe something sweet. So in a sense, we're uh, stimulating an adrenaline rush by starting our day with coffee. So if we start our day with like, I'm going to do something cleansing, alkalinizing, healing, then the rest of the day is going to go a lot better. But you start your day with coffee and donuts, it's probably going to go downhill from there. Now, you know, it's. I remember uh, there's there are times that I just stopped drinking for a while, and I know that uh, part of it is there's a habit that's involved with it. For instance, you might sit down and watch TV and drink some beers or something. And mm -hmm. so when you decide to do that, at least in my case, then I'd go, I'd buy ginger ale. I didn't want it to be too soda poppy, so I'd get that. Then I'd realize, well, wait a minute. Now, why do this? Because then you'd find yourself going through a liter or something like that, maybe even two liters. And it's like, okay, well, why don't I ch uh, change this just to simply drinking water? And mm -hmm. just that change alone, because then, you know, you're not, you're, you're, in the cycle of, you know, having something like a habit of something in your hand to drink while you're watching TV or whatever. And then you change it all the way to water. Then you notice you're slowing down, but you're drinking water and it feels much better. It gets a lot easier. So it was just changing the habit that you were used to, you know, for instance. Right, or substituting it with a healthier habit. And, you know, I know for myself, because of the, the bubbly conditioning that so many of us have, something that I might order if I am out or at a party, remember those, um, a little bit of cranberry juice with some sparkling water, you know, which can be sugar-free, um, but certainly, yeah, just drinking water. Um, and another thing that, you know, might seem challenging for people, but if we look at history, a lot of our ancestors, when they were hanging out with their friends, uh, maybe they weren't watching TV, maybe they were listening to the radio or something novel like that, but they were doing things with their hands. You know, maybe the men were whittling or carving or, um, you know, making something, and then the women might be sewing or knitting or crocheting. And I think that's something that's really disappeared from our culture, and yet doing something with our hands can activate our brain, keep us calm, improve our self-esteem because we're making something, you know, beautiful or useful or gifting something. And I would really like to encourage people to bring back that tradition that, you know, knit one, purl two can be a great way to manage stress. And I do sometimes watch TV and I may be sewing or uh, making a quilt and I can say, yes, I watched Outlander, but I watched it in French and I with French subtitles, animate a quilt. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and it's pretty interesting because I know it's funny when I hear people who have uh, 
eliminated their addictions, if you will, and they find themselves getting a lot more done, you know, achieving more goals, things like that. It's pretty crazy how that all works. Well, one of the, um, you know, also according to Asian medicine, addictive personalities often have their roots in the health of our liver, and the emotions associated with the liver are anger and depression. And one of the ways that we can help heal anger and depression is through creativity. So even something like sketching or maybe playing an instrument rather than just listening to music, but finding, you know, tap into something creative that you enjoy and hopefully that's portable. And I might seem like a super nerd, but um, I sometimes, you know, I bring a little portable craft with me and I find that that can even help with things like overeating. You know, people will, you know, eat too much popcorn or eat, you know, chips, a, a bad fried food kind of thing. Um, whereas if they were doing something creative, it's really easy to keep your hand out of the, the chip bowl. <laughs> Now, um, I wanted to ask uh, about uh, herbal remedies. What would you uh, suggest there? And I mean, you know, for just maybe general things for people listening, whether it's for alcohol or maybe there's perhaps even a food addiction. Um, well, you know, in my book, Addiction Free Naturally, I talk about many different herbs, and some of them are very addiction specific. So if we were to say something like, um, you know, smoking cigarettes, for example. Uh, there's an herb called lobelia that has an alkaloid in it called lobeline, which helps to uh, satisfy the receptor sites for uh, nicotine. Um, if the addiction is to alcohol, there's herbs like angelica or clove, uh, juniper berries. Um, if the addiction is to, say, a stimulant like coffee, a person might find that switching to products that are less irritating to the kidneys, bladder, prostate, etc. Um, herbs like yerba mate or green tea might offer more health benefits. So I really like what you said about you know replacing a harmful habit with a more beneficial habit. So there's you know, many, many herbs. Um, I think of herbs that help to detoxify the liver because the sooner you can cleanse out the residue of your addictive substance, the easier it is to let go of it. So things like dandelion root or burdock root. And all of these roots could be used in a tea or a tincture or a capsule. However, for people with alcohol addiction, we don't want to use tinctures in alcohol because, you know, even a little bit of alcohol can get people, you know, back to drinking. So um, licorice root and is another one because it keeps the blood sugar level stable i find that um, things that are naturally sweet can really help to liberate us from addictive behavior so those are just a few of the herbs um, but again addiction free naturally will look at well if your addiction is say uh, cocaine or methamphetamine um, these are the herbs that are going to be helpful so there's probably like you know, 50 different herbs, maybe even 100 in there that are helpful. Very extensive, no doubt about that. One uh, that I was curious about as I was uh, looking in the book was uh, that on aromatherapy. That's something you don't hear every day. Well, um, aromatherapy is um, this practice of using essential oils, which are made from plants, and by smelling them, simply like opening up a bottle of, say, a cinnamon essential oil, for example. You smell it, and your brain is receiving the very wonderful, familiar, pleasant, sweet smell of cinnamon. So in a sense, you're giving your brain a little treat. And, I, you know, it's kind of like scratch and sniff or something. So rather than going and having a piece of coffee cake, Simply uh, by smelling cinnamon, I'm going to find, well, I just gave my brain a little sweetness. Or let's say someone uses an addictive substance for anxiety rather than taking a drug or using something harmful to their health for anxiety. Simply opening up a bottle of lavender essential oil and taking five deep breaths on each nostril to balance the brain hemispheres is going to help you to feel calmer within minutes. And it's so safe, you don't need to ingest anything. It's very uh, 
inexpensive. And aromatherapy is a way of working with our psyche because we know that the essential oils can affect our moods and our hormones and our immunity. So it's really a delightful practice. And, you know, for example, if someone's a cigarette smoker, smelling essential oil of black pepper might also be helpful. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, it doesn't make you sneeze like pepper grains do, but uh, the smell of black pepper is probably the most like a cigarette. So you're satisfying those receptors. And then for, you know, stimulant addictions like cocaine or amphetamines, using something that is kind of uplifting and energizing like peppermint or lemon or wintergreen. So again, addiction free naturally is going to help people select what would be the best essential oil. And if nothing else, we could say that anything that gets you to breathe more deeply and fully is going to, you know, help calm you down, help give you more energy, and help your basic way that you live. So we all need to focus on that. Now, I I noticed, too, that you talk about vitamin Mm -hmm. supplementation, which might surprise listeners out there about this. Um, Well, you know, I'm always going to say that food should be our first medicine. Sure. And then I like to use herbs and, of course, all the lifestyle things. But, you know, if someone's really having a hard time with an addiction, there could be some supplements that can give the body the support it needs. And, again, uh, Addiction Free Naturally is going to have specific supplements for different addictions. But in general, I would say that a calcium-magnesium supplement is going to help one to feel calm, to sleep better. A B vitamin complex during the day can help us to have more energy. Uh, There's a trace mineral called chromium, GTF chromium. The GTF stands for glucose tolerance factor, and that can help stabilize blood sugar so we don't like, you know, crave that, you know, 4 o'clock drink or that, you know, 10 a.m. cigarette. Um, And then uh, essential fatty acids, which could be from fish oil or there are vegan supplements like um, vegan omegas that are made from algae. So, you know, you, if you need a little extra support, taking a vitamin supplement can be really helpful. And I think if people realize, like, well, what is this addiction costing me? Um, and it could be, you know, a dollar thing, like, you know, how much do you spend a week on alcohol or tobacco or, you know, mate lattes at the coffee shop or something like that. So if you're going to spend money on addiction, you know, think of what a $100 investment in getting a few sup- good quality supplements from a natural food store can support you and in the long run save you money because you might just need to use them for a while. But I think that that is an extra boon that can make your transition of letting go of a substance even more successful. You know, the other thing, too, is you were uh, talking about smokers, and I was talking about, you know, an alcohol habit, for instance, watching TV and how you simply just change the habit right there, and you realize, wow, this is a little more empowering than I expected it to be. And I know that uh, my stepfather, he, when he was a smoker, he says a lot of times he would have, find himself having a cigarette when he would take the dogs out to go to the bathroom at night before going to bed. And he said he just simply changed the location that he was going to, and he would just stand outside with them. And that alone, he says, then I didn't feel that trigger. And that's usually why a lot of people stay addicted as well. There's a trigger. There's something that says this is part of a habit or a routine, and you're just simply changing that. So it's more of a holistic approach than simply saying, you know, go try tarot root for this. You know, there's a lot more to it, or as you just mentioned, and I thought it was very valuable. Take a look at how much money you're spending on your addiction. For instance, uh, there was a, a friend of mine just recently. I found out that he had stopped drinking, even though he'll still go into uh, certain bars, but he'll just drink iced tea. But he says he realized he was spending like six hundred dollars a week. <laughs> wow, that's a lot oh, of money for is, an addiction. So <laughs> just, that's just drinking. Like- 
So what if you started saving some of that money? Right, exactly. You know, and then like, wow, you could afford a vacation or new clothes or books or a subscription, subscription to something that you really want. But I love what you said about changing the triggers. You know, so if it's like, oh, you know, when I get off work, I go, you know, here, I, I drive by the liquor store. So maybe changing the trigger so maybe you do something else after work. You go, um, you know, of course, we're in a great time of change right now, but it might be you go to the gym or you go for a walk or you read a magazine or you make a phone call. You find something else and... Um, it can also be really helpful to make a list of all the reasons why you want to stop. Um, and some people are, are going to do really a lot better if they give themselves a target date. So it's great that we're having this conversation now because a target date might be like, I will be done by, you know, the first of the year or the winter solstice or, um, you know, Valentine's Day. So you start gradually decreasing but, you know, making a list of all the reasons why you want to stop can be very empowering. And, you know, another trigger can even be the people we hang out with. It might be like, oh, but we always drink coffee together. We always drink beer together. We always, you know, shoot up heroin together. And so it may be time to uh, spend time with some of your other friends that are not using that because your real friends are going to support you and sometimes – if you're ready to quit something and your friends are not, uh, it may, you know, it might make them feel judged or they may say, come on, come on, just one or it's your birthday or it's a special occasion. And so what you really want is support to um, let go of something right. that's no longer serving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, uh, as you point out so applicably in your book, uh, Addiction Free Naturally, is this is a very holistic approach to things, but it's also a very natural one, and it's very possible to do. It's not something that has to be impossible. And uh, I'm curious, uh, is there a website people can go and discover more about your work and maybe get the book, things like that? Surely. Thank you so much for asking. You can mm -hmm. visit my website, which is BrigitteMars.com, and I will spell that. Brigitte is B-R-I-G-I-T-T-E-M-A-R-S.com. And I have written 14 books. Of course, you can always buy my book on Amazon, but we do want to support local, you know, and artists themselves rather than only big businesses. So, you know, when we're thinking about where we put our money, it's I, I just wanted to put that out there. No, I totally agree with that. Sometimes when we're, we're in the scope of uh, what you might call political talks, I'll always say, two things do your homework and vote with your wallet <laughs> absolutely and yeah you vote with your dollars when you choose to support um, natural products or organic or the preservative free so we want to create a better world we need to uh, use our dollars wisely thank you for saying that absolutely well Brigitte thank you so much for being on the program today and sharing your marvelous work with people out there you know, again, it's not never easy in the beginning, but once you make that step and that commitment, you're going to feel so much better, not just physically, but, you know, you're going to feel empowered, and that's the cool thing about, the, about it all. Absolutely. Get free, get strong, and do your best while you're here on the planet. I that's thank you right. so much for having me on your show. You never know. You may end up writing a book just like you did. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Rashid, thank you again for being on the program today. My, my pleasure. Thank you so much. You bet. Bye-bye. We want to thank you, the listeners out there, for tuning in. You can discover more at beyond50radio.com. That is the number 50. We encourage you to sign up for our weekly e-newsletter and stay up to date with what's going on in the world of Beyond 50 as well as our upcoming shows. I'm Daniel Davis. 